Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to a uh, another video. This is a, a special weekend edition. We have some slightly new news for you. It's still kind of based on a rumor, uh, but it has to do with, I don't want to necessarily say Switch Pro, but it, it's either like for a Pro or for a next-gen Switch. Uh, I, I'm not really sure which way I'm leaning on this. Uh, it, it could be specifically for next-gen, but... Uh, we're going to talk about this because it comes from a person who uh, isn't your everyday, you know, quote unquote, leaker, isn't somebody who has any sort of agenda or bias or any reason to put information out there uh, other than just having access and, and wanting to let people know what's upcoming, specifically from NVIDIA. So we're going to get into uh, some very technical details here. Uh, I'm going to try to, you know, not make this uh, sound super unrealistic or anything like that because it's going to sound unrealistic at first, uh, but we'll explain why it's not uh, as we go here. And um, I'm actually uh, on NeoGAF for this one because there was a few posts uh, in response to some of this news that I want to get into. Uh, before we jump into this, though, however, I got to remind you, we are giving away two copies of Skyward Sword HD. Uh, if you would like to enter to win, head down to the description to find out how. All right, so this, again, comes from Kopite7KIMI. Uh, he is a, I mean, at this point, it's close to a verified NVIDIA leaker as there can be. Uh, he's leaked so much from NVIDIA over the years, from die shots to exact details uh, about the Ampere cards and a whole bunch of NVIDIA stuff over the years. He's not someone who has ever participated in any sort of wars between AMD and NVIDIA. He's never participated in any sort of... Uh, caring what systems are going to be he doesn't care if systems are going to be successful if certain chipsets are going to be successful he's never really gotten involved in anything that us gamers tend to argue about he just factually throws out information and just leaves it at that and back on june 10th he did put out a um a tweet saying that this is a preliminary picture of a t234 on wikipedia uh, and he said, you know, this is actually very, very clear if you've taken any sort of research into the T234, which is an Orin chip. Uh, so why do we always have to guess? And he said that Nintendo is going to use a customized one, which internally is being known as the T239. And this, uh, this T234 uh, has 2,048 CUDA cores uh, with 16 shader blocks with 128 cores per block plus cache and an interconnect uh, and then obviously the 12 uh, core ARM Cortex A78 AE Hercules um, chip. So you got uh, information on the GPU and CPU. And that th those kind of specs sound pretty insane for a Switch. Um, they're already pretty insane, even you know just throwing that out there as comparable to like a PlayStation 5 uh, or a um, Xbox Series X. I mean, these specs are um, top tier stuff. Uh, but you got to remember that he does say Nintendo's using a customized one. So... It's not going to have 12 cores. Uh, it's not going to have, you know, 2,000 plus CUDA cores and all of that for the GPU. Uh, it, it, that's unrealistic. Uh, not really affordable. It's going to be a cutback version of this, clearly. Because if it was this, we're talking about a $600, $700 switch. And that doesn't make any sense. Now, Copi, uh recently responded uh, a couple days ago. Uh, and he responded with the code name for the Switch variant uh, called Black Knight. Now, Black Knight actually falls right in line with all of the previous code names for Switch um, chips because all of them have been based on, on superheroes and all of that. Uh, as, as the original poster here on uh, NeoGAF notes, says Black Knight does fit with NVIDIA's naming scheme considering the code name for all of the automotive SOCs are named after fictional superheroes in the DC Comics, Xavier and Orin, while the code names of all the mobile SOCs after the Tagra 4 are named after superheroes in the Marvel Comics, Logan, Arista, Mariko, Parker, and now Black Knight. Um, so yeah, the naming that he put out there obviously fits right in with the traditional naming conventions uh, used for their mobile versions of their chips. So this looks really legit. Uh, and again, this isn't some guy who is a rumor monger out there. This isn't some guy that cares about wars or our feelings and, and how upset you want to be. Oh, the Switch Pro isn't real. Oh, Nintendo's not working on next-gen hardware, which is really stupid to even say that because Nintendo has stated from 2019 on forward, 
their CEO has repeatedly said they're always working on new hardware. So like they're always working on something. And he just said earlier this year that they're still working on something. So like factually, Nintendo's working on new hardware, whether it's the Switch Pro or Next Gen. Doesn't matter what, they're working on something. So yeah, let's just give credit where credit's due here. Um, this could be something Nintendo's using or possibly looking into. And again, Copite has been completely correct in the past. He he was the one that gave us the Mariko chip uh, before we even knew it was the Mariko chip. He told us all of the details about this back in the OG Switch, about the cut down, or I should say the slimmed, it's not really cut down, when, when they redesigned it again to, for the light and the version to a Switch. He also gave us all the details on that. And he's given us details, obviously, in the 3000 series graphics cards. And everyone's like, this can't be possible because this, this, this chip sounds like a 3050, uh, which... Yeah, is a really, really powerful car. There's no way in heck the Switch would have that. Well, of course the Switch isn't going to have a damn 3050. Well, let's talk about the legitimacy of this person just to, to, so you understand why we're talking about him. This isn't like your Samus Hunters or some... This guy has been at it for a hell of a long time. Um, and as uh, someone put out here in this thread... Um, you know, Voltic Arc Angle here put out in this thread. Uh, he said, for anyone doubting uh, Copite 7 uh, Kimmy's creds, just don't. He isn't some, you know, quote unquote insider who just posts things up as FUD with an agenda against some console manufacturer because his feelings were hurt. Uh, and they felt that the internet was one sided on social media about a game console or some two bit hack like Moore's Law is dead, pretending to be an insider to get those clickbait views for ad revenue by regurgitating Captain Obvious Info, educated guesses that are on the internet, Reddit, YouTube, Twitter, um, Linus Tech Tip forums, growing big enough to actually have industry people leak info with these kinds of hacks. He's Copite Seven Kimi, along with a few others, like Tum underscore Appysack on Twitter, are legit as it can get. They only share credible info, unlike the fake clickbaiting Muppets above in my post. And their Copite, uh, Seven Kimi, and Tum underscore Appysack track records are almost 100% correct. Never had a leak wrong. This is the single reason why, like, literally all tech YouTube channels and websites, including, you know, PC Gamer and all that, quote these two Twitter IDs when it comes to rumors. If I can remember correctly, either Appysack or Copite leaked the PlayStation 5 SOC layout, but without the die shot, codenamed AMD Gonzalo, way before Sony's announcement, and even the AMD Smart Shift implementation that bumps the clocks higher to reach a theoretical peak of 10.3 teraflops. These guys are the real deal when it comes to hardware leaks from the semiconductor industry. Whether this SoC will be a straight up loaded onto the Switch Pro or a cut down variant will be used is debatable, and that's for us to wait and see. Going with the latter, going by Nintendo's antics in the industry and the profit margins on hardware using a low BOM for now until it's announced, so I don't really get disappointed in expecting more. So what he's saying is, Obviously, it's just an opinion uh, that you should expect Nintendo to use a cutback version, which I, I think is pretty reasonable. Remember, Nintendo right now on the current Switch only uses like four CPU cores and like hardly, I mean, the, the CUDA core count on, on a 2015 chip is not very high. So um, I think realistic expectations, if they're going to use this chip, it use the cutback version, which means they're going to be, they're not going to be using the full capabilities. They're going to, they're going to be able to get a lot of the die runoffs that, that end up not meeting spec. Um, I feel like, you know, it, anything between, you know, I, I'd say six to eight cores uh, instead of the 12, I, I think is more realistic here. And obviously we're talking about better CPU cores already. So even if they just went with four cores, these are four better, faster, more efficient cores already than what's in Switch. But I, I would suspect if you have a 12 core capable chip uh, and you're using a cutback version, that maybe you cut back to, you know, six, maybe maybe eight. You know, you can cut back half the cores or, or, or maybe go to eight. Um, and then obviously in terms of the, the, the GPU, I'm expecting at least a 50% cut, right? You know, if it's 2,048, um, you know, CUDA cores, then I expect 1,000. 24 max CUDA cores. So I do think there's a very, very low chance they're going to use the full capa capabilities of the T239 or now known as Black Knight chip, uh, or, or at least the original two. Because like, well, cause remember what, what Copite said, you know, if, if you go back to just his own words, forget what other people are saying about it, you know, his own words are, are, are pretty clear and, and concise. Uh, the die shot that's on Wikipedia is of a T234, uh, NVIDIA is using a customized version of that. So, like, this die shot with the 12 cores and the 2,000-plus CUDA cores, like, 
Um, yeah, that is of a chip that Nintendo is basing, or at least NVIDIA and Nintendo is basing a mobile version off of. Um, but it's not going to be that exact one. They're going to use a cutback version. or a, a, He doesn't use cutback, he says customized, but... That, that that's really what customized means is that they're going to take that chip and they're going to sh- they're they're going to remove aspects of it um, to make it cheaper for manufacturing and make it more affordable. This obviously, by the way, if this is going in a Switch Pro, which I I mean it's hard for me to fathom that this is anything but next gen. We're talking about an orange chip, guys. We're talking about a top of the line chipset, like today's technology. I can't imagine that's for anything other than a Switch 2. But if this is somehow what the hell is going into a Switch Pro, I mean, a Switch Pro is at least $400, right? It has to be. It has to be at least $400, um, if not more. And and that, to me, I'm okay with, you know, I'm heck, I'm okay with them charging five. They give me this. They give me 12 cores and 2,000 plus. I'll pay 500, 600, 700 bucks for a Switch Pro. But I don't know that a lot of other people would. So I do think they're going to uh, use the cutback version that ends up making it more affordable. I I just wonder, is it going to end up being for a pro or is it going to be for next gen? And if they, if it's going to be for next gen, when is next gen coming? Because obviously if they're using, this is today's technology, if they're going to use this, but then they're not going to release it for say, you know, three years, let's say in the natural 2023, 2024, well, it's going to be the similar situation to today. See, when we got this in 2017, it was using a chip that was two to three years old, right? The Tegra X1 was two to three years old. And if they're going to use this in a future switch, in a next-gen switch, it's exciting, but it's also going to be two to three years old again uh, and find itself in a similar situation to this where, while it's a nice bump over this, it's still not really where current technology is at that time. And that's one reason why I also believe that is is uh, for next gen because it would make more sense to use today's technology in a future next gen switch because that's just Nintendo's mo. They use the latest and greatest day one. Uh, although could this be an pro? We can't dismiss it because Kobe isn't telling us what this is going to be. Um, you know, he, he doesn't even say that this is specifically. You know, when he says Nintendo will use a customized one. He's not specifying that a customized one for the pro or a customized one for next gen. He's not specifying. He's just saying this is what I know. Okay, I know Nintendo is using this chipset in some form, somewhere. They're using a cutback version or a customized version of it, and they're calling that customized version Black Knight. Now we'll have to wait and see what happens. We'll have to wait and see if it comes up in the firmware in the future. We'll have to, we'll just have to wait and see. We're, we're in wait and see mode right now. Again, I know some of you guys are very, very sick of Switch Pro this, Switch Pro that, next gen Switch that. We know Nintendo's working on new hardware. Irregardless of our personal opinions on if Pro is real, if those leakers are are legit, doesn't matter. Nintendo themselves told us they're working on new hardware. They've told us multiple times over the last two years they're working on new hardware. Doesn't mean it's a Pro. Could just be for next gen. Nintendo's always working on new hardware, by the way. From the moment this thing was released, they were already working on what was next. Okay? Nintendo's always working on hardware. So... This appears to be a chip they're using in something, in some form, at some point in the future, whether that's the Pro or whether that is next gen. Either way, it's exciting for now. We'll have to see how exciting it is if it's technically for next gen and we have to wait two to three years. Maybe it won't be as exciting then. I have no idea. But for right now, it's it's exciting to think of the possibilities of this chip, especially if it is intended for a Pro. Uh, That would be really impressive of Nintendo. I, I honestly... Would be giving you know Nintendo a, a, a standing applause at this point if this was for a pro because that is that's impressive. Um, that that means Nintendo's not holding back, <laughs> but I I think Nintendo's still going to hold back for pricing reasons. So, anyways, you guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. And I just want to end this by saying, how about them bucks, baby? Uh, I know you can't tell this is just like a a, a, a front of a bucks shirt, but um, you got see this little twenty one there. That's right. This is a Drew holiday buck shirt shout out to drew holiday hell of a game put the clamps on trey young and then dropped 22 himself barely even playing like 30 minutes because the bucks blew him out it was awesome we'll have to wait and see what happens in atlanta of course because hey atlanta got what they wanted they got one win in milwaukee now the bucks got to return and at least get one win back so we'll see what happens uh but thank you guys so much for tuning in i am the thunder rebel jets from nintendo prime hopefully you enjoyed this nice little weekend video uh, and you don't get too mad at me for like bringing up pro and bringing up next gen 
Like we factually know something's happening and this is apparently appears to be very close to what we're getting in some form in the future. So let me know your thoughts. I'll link to this thread uh, down in the description. Thank you guys for tuning in and I'll catch you in the next video.